Tonight, out of darkness and despair. My heart was broken. God, Lord Jesus. A new perspective on the most destructive storm in U.S. history. I had to do something. I wasn't going to leave them there. Harrowing stories it took 10 years to tell. I saw a weird acceptance in his eyes that really unnerved me. And stories that hit close to home. For about, what, 24 to 48 hours, you didn't know if mom and I were even alive. Join us on a remarkable journey of renewal. We will always fight to keep uh, what makes New Orleans great alive. Redemption. The New Orleans Saints Super Bowl champs. I needed somebody to believe in me just as much as New Orleans needed someone to believe in them. And resilience. That's what I'm talking about. Now I'm crying. Katrina, 10 years after the storm. You think about food and music when you come to the Gulf Coast. Cajun and Creole cooking, Mississippi's soulful Delta blues, and the swinging jazz of New Orleans. Yet even now, 10 years after Katrina, there's something else you can't help but think about when you're here. In the aftermath of the storm, the music of everyday life just disappeared. It was still. There was not even a seagull. It was very ominous. There was nothing, no birds, no cats, no dogs. And I'll, I'll never forget that. And for all of that to be gone? You never understand it until you miss it. But before that eerie silence, there was the unforgettable angry howl of the massive hurricane as it cut a wide swath of destruction across the Gulf Coast. Katrina strengthened into a hurricane on August 25, 2005. And as it gained force over the warm Gulf waters, it was quickly predicted to become a catastrophic event. My fear is, is absolutely that the models are correct. It is gaining strength again. It is now stalking the Gulf Coast. It rapidly doubled in size and intensified into a Category 5 hurricane. This is a terrible storm. Take this seriously. Across Louisiana and Mississippi, there were urgent orders to evacuate. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a test. From the Texas coast to the Florida panhandle, millions braced for the worst. Those who couldn't evacuate or wouldn't hunkered down. We love y'all, and, and we're going we're gonna to make it. Or took refuge at a shelter of last resort. Already hundreds of people have made their way to the Superdome, driving cars, walking, taking buses. On August 29th, Katrina made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane, still packing deadly winds as strong as 125 miles per hour. The storm has come ashore this morning, coming in over Grand Isle, Louisiana. We got hit with a piece of debris, took out the window in our vehicle. For hours, the coast was under assault. When it was over, Katrina's fierce winds and near-record storm surge had gone from natural disaster to national tragedy. Places like Slidell, Louisiana, just outside of New Orleans, suffered catastrophic damage. In New Orleans, we have a major American city underwater. Major levees broke, and slowly the city has filled with water. The city is going to be essentially uninhabitable for many days. We were hearing rumors that the Lower Ninth Ward might be flooding. And the first thing that I saw was this house. Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist Ted Jackson ignored his newspaper's evacuation orders and commandeered a small boat to photograph the storm for the Times-Picayune. There was a family on the porch that was desperate uh, with water up to their chest. Above the roar of the hurricane and the, the bands of the rain that just kept slapping us, they were screaming to me for help. 80% of New Orleans flooded after the levees failed. Neighborhoods like St. Bernard Parish completely submerged, leaving people trapped, isolated, asking, where is the help? 
when is it coming? At the convention center, an estimated 25,000 people showed up, only to find out it wasn't an official place for evacuation. We need help. So they were left stranded. And it can't give us a bottle of water for, for one thing. Some left to die. Inside the convention center, there were, there were five bodies that I saw. Outside, there was one in a wheelchair that um, people had tried to respectfully um, cover with a blanket. I, I was grabbed by the elbow by a woman, woman named Angela Perkins. She just, she started, started screaming, and she said, help us, help us, please. And at that point, it's when she dropped down to her knees and just screamed. And while some people blame the government for failing as badly as the levees, one federal agency was hailed as being heroic, the U.S. Coast Guard, credited with rescuing more than 30,000 people. What stands out 10 years later is how much has been rebuilt. It's great to see the homes, but being from this area, I know it's still missing. And you can see why, after the levees failed with more than 50 breaches, how water would just pour into the city, leaving an estimated 60,000 people trapped for days. I think most of America, most of the world, remembers those images of people on the rooftop trying to make signs. What was it like to make it to those rooftops and see people in such a state of desperation? Sometimes when you got down there, they were crying because they wanted to leave so bad. Sometimes they were just jumping up and down for joy because they wanted to get out. Sometimes they were so dehydrated and beat down that they could barely even walk to get to the the position that they needed to be to get hoisted up, and you had to physically help them to get into the basket because they were just so tired and exhausted. But my disposition was to pick the women and children up first. One of those children, 15-year-old Serena Johnson, now 25. She and her family sought safety on the roof of this house. We all wanted help. That's all we wanted was help, and nobody came to our aid for a long time, and that's what makes me mad. Three days passed. Serena and her parents were stranded in the unbearable heat. And then, just as things were getting really precarious, they caught the attention of a Coast Guard helicopter. At that point, you were out of food, out of water. It was getting close to being completely out of everything. So it was like, they, they came at the right, right they time. They came at the right time. So what like, was that moment like when you knew that that helicopter was coming for you? This was your way out. I remember it vividly when it happened. As I'm going up into the air, and we went spinning. We mm. went spiraling up into the helicopter. I had packed a little mesh book bag, just with a couple of things, just in case we had got out. But when the helicopter came, the propeller winds were so strong, it opened up my bag, and all of my clothes fell into the water. I can't see no cars, it's like you're just dropping into a swamp. I think they took my mom in second, they took me in first, and then we left, like, without my dad. Dad was still on the roof? Coming up, the heart-stopping video of a hero rescuer as Katrina makes a direct hit in Mississippi. We're driving a boat down the highway. I had to do something, I wasn't gonna leave them there and a dramatic survival story. It's surreal. It's just totally surreal. It took one woman 10 years to tell. You're looking at it, you're acknowledging it, but it does doesn't not. seem real. Plus, Serena's life, blown by the storm in an unexpected direction. I've been through a lot. I'm speaking the truth. And later, a personal homecoming, when we return. Oh. Oh. 